Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, I want to show you how the color mapping works in V-Ray and 3ds Max. Just so that you guys know what's happening, I'm going to show you well, what kind of a setup I have for this scene first. So, as you can see, it's a fairly uh, simple scene. We basically have one V-Ray camera set up uh, to look at the room. And then the room itself, it's basically primitive box modeling where you have a couple of walls, we have an opening in the ceiling. In that opening, we have another uh, V-Ray light, as you can see it over here. Yeah, and it's shining down, downwards. Then we have one more V-Ray light over here, and that V-Ray light has uh, basically, it's basically uh, just illuminating the torus knot. So basically the uh, blue element over here. Then we have a couple of teapots on the side and we have some stairways which basically go to nowhere. So I know, genius engineering and all that. So, now that we've seen what kind of uh, scene we're looking at, we can go into V-Ray and open the color mapping. Now, right out of the box, I want to say that the color mapping is the second out of the three most important things that you want to set up correctly if you want to use V-Ray. Now, the first one we passed on the previous uh, video or the previous post, that was about the image sampler or the anti-aliasing. If you have set up that correctly, then you, the second uh, thing on your uh, journey would be to set up the color mapping correctly. Okay, uh, when you click on the type for color mapping, you're gonna have a list of types to choose from. In this video, I want to go over four of these. So the first three, so linear multiply, exponential, HSV exponential, and Reinhardt. The three uh, over here, like the intensity exponential, gamma correction, and the intensity gamma, are the, they're, let, let's say, just call them outdated, and they really have a little, uh, or very little use in nowadays, so, but still, let's just say that 99% of your time, you're either going to be using uh, these three or the Reinhardt, but from what I've seen, most pre people prefer to use Reinhardt, but let's not get ahead of each, uh, ourselves and let's go and explain one after the other. We're going to start off with the first one or the linear multiply. The first thing you're going to see is you have a dark multiplier here and then a bright multiplier and a gamma value. Well, this is the most important thing if you're still using 2.x version of V-Ray. By default, the gamma setup for uh, your renders is set up as 1. So this is okay if you're using a linear workflow, but in case you're not, you want to make sure the gamma setup is placed at 2.2. Let me show you the difference. I'm going to put a render or just start a render with the gamma correction set up as, I'll just turn it off like this. The gamma correction right now is set up as one. You can see that the most of the image is kind of dark. With the correct gamma setup for 2.2 and a render, you're going to get the same image to look much more like what you would see on your screen. There you go. sRGB off. What you would see on your screen. So the first thing that I want to uh, I want you guys to notice is that when you're using a linear multiply, you have one problem. And that problem is right here. You're seeing that how this entire area is feeling blown out of proportion. Uh, what you're seeing here is basically an effect called color burn. 
when you're using multiply or linear multiply it's basically trying to configure and take into calculations the distance between the light source and the surface at which is showing you that effect now for this reason I took one extra light over here like the, this V-ray plane you're seeing and it's shining just uh, on this torus knot that was basically because I really wanted to exaggerate this color burn now I'm gonna go ahead and do a region render of just the torus knot but this time around I'm going to take it and uh, change the type from linear multiply down to exponential and before I do anything else I want to make sure that we're gonna have something to compare it with so I'm gonna save this so this is our linear multiply now I'm gonna go ahead and put it as an exponential like this and hit render with this we can notice right away that the color burn that we uh, previously talked about now it's gone let me just take and make one set a the other one set b and now with this line when i go over it we can notice a big difference that color burn is gone but the basic color or the diffuse color of the actual torus knot has been changed a bit what does it mean well the way that exponential works is is trying to nullify that or a color burn by moving the values of the diffuse down so it's trying to make it more neutral by doing that it's pushing the colors more towards white or more towards being desaturated so case in point we get a color or a basic color that looks a bit faded so that's the basic difference between using exponential and linear. So if you're using linear, you're gonna be stuck with the problem of getting places that are too close to near the um, light source to look color burned. If you're gonna be using exponential, you're gonna get your colors to be a bit faded by how or uh, depending on how much light they're being cast uh, has been cast on them so we have one other choice it's for example if we want to preserve the original color but get rid of the actual color burn we can use the HSV exponential let me show you guys how this is gonna look if we put a render now right away we can notice that the original color save the original color is there there we go the original color color is there but all the blow blowout or the color burn is gone so that is what exactly HSV exponential does. It's preserving the original color or the diffuse color and it's getting rid of the color burn. Now, this is not a bad thing, but it's, well, unrealistic. The reason for this would be if you simply want to keep an artistic view of your model, but it's highly unrealistic. So the other way to deal with the problems uh, that color burn uh, makes would be to try and find some kind of a uh, way to control how much color burn we have without uh, getting it off 100% which uh, the exponential does and that is the Reinhardt type but before we go over to Reinhardt I want to get back to exponential just so we can uh, clarify what the dark multiplier does and what the bright multiplier does for example the dark multiplier is set up as one 
for so I'm just gonna render what uh, one right now this is with one exponential so as we can see this is how the scene looks now if we go ahead and put dark multiplier 2 and then I'm just going to select this part over here and render check out how all the places that were getting light got lit up so instead of um, lighting up or multiplying the bright spots you're basically mul multiplying the uh, places that are not in the dark so it's more or less uh, how do you put this so it's easier to remember it's opposite when you're increasing the multiplier on the dark you're getting all the bright spots to look uh, a lot lighter so if we put it back to 0 0.5 in that case that same place is going to take all the light spots and make them darker like here so let's get it back to one and just like the dark multiplier the bright multiplier it's controlling the dark spots or the shadows so let's put it at three and see what happens bear in mind though uh, everything else is gonna get lit up a bit more but the dark places are gonna get most of it there we go as you can see with that bright multiplier we're starting to get a bit more of those uh, initially lit up places to be more radiant now I'm gonna get it back to one get it up get it down there we go back to normal so those two simply uh, control how much light is gonna be applied to the dark places and the bright places now the reason why I mentioned this is that these options are the same for the linear multiplier the exponential multiplier and the HSV exponential type those three utilize the same dark and bright multipliers but when we got, go down to Reinhardt like I uh, previously said Reinhardt works a bit different here we go we have burn value and we have a multiplier now Reinhardt is a hybrid type it's basically a mix between linear multiply and exponential multiply we saw that the linear multiply offered us uh, values of color burn so if we hit render now we see that we get that same color burn over here so if we did the same with the linear multiply we would get the same exact result so Reinhardt with a burn value of 1 is linear Reinhardt with a burn value of 0 is basically exponential so if we put an exponential run well actually here <laughs> we have zero for the burn, uh, bright multiplier so that's why it turned out like this but if we put it back to one it's the same as the Reinhardt so depending on what you have over here let's put it at 0 0.5 now we get a medium ground between those two guys actually here we go this multiplier tells you how much would you like to have on the entire scene so one there we go the the lighting is the same so this burn value basically tells you how much would you like to have color burn with like we saw uh we can control anywhere between linear and exponential by just tweaking this burn value so that is why a lot of people choose to go with Reinhardt for their renderings. Now, before we end for the color mapping, I just want to uh, give you a few quick uh, tips about 
uh, these options on the side. It's basically, if you're working with a linear workflow with Gamma 1, then you should tick this. If you're not working with linear, leave it off. If you don't know what linear workflow is, then you're not working with linear workflow, leave it off. Uh, this option over here, Affect Background, you generally want to keep this one up because it's going to take the background and take it into uh, consideration when it's doing your color mapping. So, leave this ticked on. The Sub Pixel Mapping. Generally, I tend to keep this one up as well because uh, sometimes when you have reflections and they come at a weird angle from uh, sources of light, you end up with fireflies or um, overlit pixels that know how, that simply look out of place. So that's why I usually keep this on so I avoid that problem. Now, when we're at the problem with the fireflies or the overlit pixels, you might want to clamp the output if you have that kind of an issue. So you can clamp this, uh, control the level, and everything above that level in uh, color difference is going to be clamped down. So this should, in, uh, in general, get rid of any fireflies you have on your scene. Now, that would be it for the color mapping. And in the next video, I would like to go a bit more about indirect illumination and try to get both of them, like the color mapping and the indirect illumination working together so we can see how this entire scene can look like when it's properly lit.